Please or ask me. I represent the proud public service workers at the Department of Public Works and City Hall. Over the past few weeks, we've conducted a review of the city of Sheboygan's finances. The general finding is actually good news. Despite the city's short-term challenges, it's not necessary now to renege on the promises made to the employees regarding their compensation in 2011 or to lay off employees in order to meet the, this year's projected shortfall. The city still does have an ample reserve balance which can be utilized to meet spending needs without compromising the city's financial position. A conservative benchmark for fund balance is 15% of annual expenditures, 5.3 million in the city's case. As of December 31st of 2009, the city had 8.5 million or 23% of annual expenditures. City used 600 of this fund balance in 2010, which brings it down to approximately 7.9 million, but that's still more than 20% of annual expenditures. This means the city's 2010 year-end fund balance remains $2.6 million above a very comfortable level of fund balance. Some of that 2.6 million can be used to prevent layoffs without needing to strip employees of negotiated wages or benefits. These are the types of economic downtimes that reserve funds are meant to help with. Indeed, the fund balance has been used over the past three years to maintain, maintain services. And in addition, 1.6 million was drawn off in 2008 for an unplanned transfer to the de debt service to reduce funds. More good news. City's likely to come in under budget on expenditures for 2010. The city has a habit of overstating their projected expenses. Since 2007, expenditures have come under final budgeted levels by about 2% each year. If you take the $34 million the city's planning on spending this year, it's probably 680,000 more money that they're gonna have than that. Uh, a review of year-to-date spending as of October 15th of this year indicated that they'd only spent about 61% of the budgeted levels. You'd expect them to be about 80% at that time. So it's very likely there's going to be money left over and some of that money can be used to fund your shortfalls for 2011. Also note the city has understated its revenues in the past. Last year, for example, the approved budget was an increase of 10% over the proposed executive budget. So you're likely to have more revenues also. 30 seconds, Sam. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we strongly disagree with Alderman Books and others' comments in the media that city employees are overcompensated. We see this myth pop up from time to time. It's totally false. I've brought for your review today not only our, our budget review, but three recent studies that compare public employees to workers in the private sector with equal levels of education and experience. The real data shows that public employees, if anything, are undercompensated for their work compared to similar workers in the private, private sector. There's the three studies. So you have three potential Sam. ways to keep your staff working. Very brief. Uh, you Sam. can tap your substantial <laughs> Sam, reserves. Sam, time's up just like any other speaker, Sam. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Sam. Uh, that is all we have on the list. Is there anybody else that would uh, like to speak regarding the budget hearing? Thanks. Mr. Capitello. Henry. Uh, so we'll have to get addresses. Yep. All right. 1619 North 38th Street. 1619 North, North 38th. 38th Street. And it's Town of Sheboygan. But I'm here speaking on behalf of Home Inc. And you will have three minutes this time, Henry. Okay. Um, I definitely wouldn't want to be in your seat tonight. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, what I want to tell you is, first of all, equity and fairness in the budget process. Um, I've read in the paper and I know that there's negotiations with the fire department and with the vote that happened and everything. I just don't want them to think that they have a blank check with the city now because there's a lot of other departments that I've noticed that they were cut quite a bit. Uh, you heard right here the library's being cut and I'm here primarily to speak on behalf of the, the police department because for the last year they've been on a hiring freeze where they haven't been able to hire anybody. We've got people that are going to be laid off or are going to be moving, for example, Officer Preby, and there's talk that they're not going to refill that position. Um, you know what? You, you get to the point where you make so many cuts that it's going to be detrimental to the community. And... If you're looking at public safety, 
I would ask you to look at other areas of revenue. Uh, I know I've spoken at previous council meetings and I'll be back at the public forum uh, this next year to probably give you some ideas. Um, but seriously, we're just making headway. I know I've met with the chief and also some of the, of the officers. Mayor, you were at that Gateway Neighborhood meetings. Um, I'm on their board of directors. We're starting to make headway and that's like taking two steps forward and taking five steps back. If you're looking at making additional cuts or even not even letting them to hire the police officers that they have. Uh, the reason I'm saying this, I don't know if you're aware of it, but since January of this year, the police department has had 79,000 calls. 79,000. Now, the population of the city of Sheboygan is over what, 50, 59,000, 60? We're talking that if you, if you look at every individual, they have called 1.25%. Every person in this city would have made a call to the police department. Now, when you have those kinds of issues, when you're looking at that kind of demand. Um, Henry, 30 you know, seconds. It's, you have to have some equity and fairness in where you cut. And like I've heard some of the other taxpayers say, you know what? I wouldn't mind paying a little bit more if it was going to hire more police officers, if it was going to make sure that the, the, the city was going to be safer and we could walk our streets without having to worry about what's going to happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Henry. Is there anybody else that would like to be heard at this public hearing regarding the budget? Okay, I thank everybody for speaking this evening. Um, in all fairness to people that uh, were not uh, able to make it here this evening, I would like uh, to adjourn this public hearing until the 22nd, so that if anybody would like to speak uh, uh, before our meeting on the 22nd, they would be welcome to. Uh, so I'd like a motion to adjourn the public hearing to the 22nd. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn the public hearing to the 22nd under discussion. Is there any? If there is not, all in favor of adjourning till the 22nd stay, say aye. 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 Opposed? We will again reopen the public hearing on the 22nd. Thank you, everybody, for speaking. Thank you, everybody, for speaking. And um, we will take a, uh, a five minute recess before we begin the regular meeting. Okay, folks, if we can uh, all grab our seats and uh, continue on here. Great. I'm not as good with the rhetoric, though. The library is a big constituency. Moving along. You've got to read it. Okay, I hope we all had a nice break. That was great. Moving on to the... Consent agenda 16-1 through 16-19, President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that all RCs be accepted and adopted, all ROs be accepted and placed on file, and all ordinances and resolutions be passed. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to uh, pull 16-19 out for a separate vote. Okay, we have a motion to pull 16-19 out for a separate vote. Second. A motion and a second to pull 1619. Uh, RC by salary and grievances recommending renewing the agreement for you. Human Resources and Labor Relations Consulting Services with HR Limited LLC. We have a motion and a second under that. Any uh, further discussion? Alderman Raisler? I'm just looking to pull uh, 1618. Okay, we have a motion to pull 1618 also out for a separate vote. We have a second on that. Second. Motion to second to pull 1618. Under discussion on 1618 or 19. All in favor of pulling those for? Do we have to have a vote on that? No. We'll just pull those for a separate vote. So we're talking here on the consent agenda, 161 through 1617. Under discussion on 161 through 1617. Going once. Okay. If there is no discussion, 
Uh, roll call, please, on 16 1 through 17. Sue? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kopp? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wongaman? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, 1618, an RC by Public Protection and Safety recommending executing the Joint Powers Agreement for Sheboygan County and City of Sheboygan 9-11 Emergency Services under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. We're doing a uh, motion by Kittleson and Rinflesh, is that Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Bowers? I'm sorry, which one are we voting on? We are uh, voting on 1618. It was pulled for a separate vote. It's the joint powers agreement with the county. Alderman Raisler pulled it for a separate vote because I believe he uh, sent it over to the city from the county being uh, <laughs> associated with the county. I vote aye. Okay, thank you. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Lipstein. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wongaman? Aye. 14 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries 1619, an RC by salary and grievances recommending renewing the agreement for a human resources and labor relations consulting services with HR Limited LLC for the period January 1, 2011 through December 31, 2011. This was pulled for a separate vote by, by Alderman Versi. Under discussion, Alderman Boren. Aye. Uh, City Clerk Richards, did you call on me for 1618? I don't believe you did. No, skip them. Would you like to vote aye? I would like to vote aye. I did it again. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Under discussion on 1619, is there any discussion? Still motion by Kittleson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, roll call, please, on 1619. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Wonkeman? No. Boren? No. And Bowers? No. Ten ayes, five noes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 16, 20, and 21 to be referred. Reports of officers, two. 1622, we will hold for 1646. Uh, reports of officers, two, 1623 and 24 lies over until the 22nd of November next Monday. 1625 and 26 lies over to December the 6th. 1627 through 1639 will be referred. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion on 1630, a move to file. Second. We have a motion and a second on 1630 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Marge Mattern requesting that when someone speaks on public forum, there should not be comments from the mayor or anyone in response to a citizen's comments under discussion. We have a motion and a second to file under discussion. If there is none, roll call please. Hammond? No. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Koth? No. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Vanderweel? No. Versi? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bowers? No. And Decker? Aye. Five ayes, ten noes. Motion fails, will be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Further discussion, Alderperson, Alderperson Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to move to file uh, agenda item number 1631. 
1631. By the city clerk submitting a communication from Marge Sigali regarding cell phone usage on the council floor during council meetings. Also uh, scheduled to go to the committee of the whole. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to file 1631 under discussion. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've, we've received these communications. We understand the complaints. I don't know that we need to discuss them further at Committee of the Whole. Okay, is there any further discussion? We have a motion and a second to file. Roll call, please. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? No. Koss? No. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Vanderweel? No. Bercy? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bowers? No. And Decker? No. And Hammond? No. Uh, uh, four ayes, 11 noes. Um, motion fails, will be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Resolutions. Oh, we have another light. All person Montemayor. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Agenda item number 1632. I think it has been handled a couple of times. I move to file. 1632 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Maynard Sonneman regenerating his complaint that was filed by the council on November 1st, 2010 regarding the open records request to the finance department. Second. We have a motion and a second to file. Um, under discussion, if there is none, we have a, a 1632 roll call, please. Huff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 12 eyes, three no's. Motion carries, document is filed. Moving on, any more lights? Okay, resolutions introduced three, 1640. By Alderman Hammond authorizing the sale and issuance of up to $5 million development revenue bonds series 2010 for RCS Empowers Incorporated project. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Abstain. And Koth? Aye. 14 eyes, one abstention. Motion carries. 1641 by Alderman Hammond, directing the city attorney to seek a new opinion by the state attorney general to specifically clarify the portion of the statute indicated as to whether unspent funds for library <coughs> services for a prior year are to not be included as funding for the purposes of computing the three-year average. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first off, I'd uh, ask to, can we suspend the rules? Um, and due to the expediency of this, we would like to get, try to get a ruling by the state attorney general by the end of the year. That will obviously make a big impact on whether we meet maintenance of effort or not. We have okay. a motion to suspend the rules and a second. Second. Under discussion on to suspending the rules. Is there any discussion? Is there anyone opposed to suspending the rules? There is nobody opposed. The rules are suspended. Alderman Hammond, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. President Kittleson. Thank you. I, I want a little more explanation on this, please. Just clarify this for us. Alderman Hammond. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, uh, several years ago, there was a ruling from the Attorney General at that time, Pig Lott and Schlager, about the, how this rule reads. And if you look at the strict um, um, how it's written in the statutes, it basically says what it says, unspent funding appropriated by municipality or, um, or county for library service for previous year are not included okay. in the maintenance of effort calculation. Um, the Attorney General's response at that time was, 
if it's designated um, restricted funds, or excuse me, um, uh, reserve funds, um, then it would be included. We want to get a clarification of that from the right. state attorney general okay. um, now. Very good. Uh, so. Thank, Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Yeah. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to let the council know that uh, the attorney general, uh, although I'm sure they'd love to hear from me, they're, uh, <laughs> they have no obligation to respond to a city attorney's request, as opposed to uh, if your county corporation council, uh, they, they by statute provide legal advice to counties uh, and obviously the state agencies, but they don't by statute provide legal advice to cities or city attorneys. So I can, if you direct me to, I'll write a letter, but we may not get a response. So, uh, I wouldn't hold your breath that you're gonna get it bef uh, before the budget needs to be adopted either. It's a legal term? <laughs> hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Attorney McLean. Uh, under further discussion, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, Attorney McLean, do you think it might also be appropriate to uh, contact the Department of Revenue? I know they have a division that deals with local financing. Would that be another resource possibly to get a, maybe even get a ruling sooner than the Attorney General? Um, I, w I would doubt it, Alderman uh, Bourne. I think as far as a legal opinion on if that's what you're looking for as to the meaning of the statute, I think it's the Attorney General is the appropriate party to get that from. Okay, thank you. You know, but if you want to direct me to send a, a letter, I'll uh, be happy well, to send possibly. a letter. I, I don't want to discourage See, maybe, you. Maybe uh, CC the Department of Revenue, you know, if, that, if you think it's appropriate, or locate a person in the DOR that uh, deals with local financing questions. Well, you guys will have to tell me what you want, but uh, again, they, they've got no obligation no statutory authority to, uh, or no requirement to provide legal advice to municipalities. Well, I'll leave that up. Alderman Boren, please continue. I'll, just, I'll leave that up to Alderman Hammond, seeing it's his document, uh, if he thinks the DOR is appropriate seat to be CC'd on that, but it's up to him, it's his document. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Attorney McLean would, um, would there be a way to get this into the county cor uh, corporate council's hands or is this something they would have to take up at their county board level? Yeah, I couldn't just uh, ask them to send a letter on, okay. on our behalf. Uh, I think that's something that the county board would have to uh, authorize their corporation council to request. Yeah, d even you know, notwithstanding what, what the attorney McLean was, was mentioning, and thank you very much for clarifying that, um, I still think um, this may be a, a, a a request to send to the Attorney General, given the spotlight that's going to be put on maintenance of effort, um, you know, not only here, but obviously what happened in Milwaukee over the past year. Um, I think this may be something that the Attorney General would review. Um, so I would, I would still ask that we pass this and, and ha ask Attorney McLean to send a letter or a request. Thank you, uh, Alderman Hammond. We have a motion and a second to send a letter uh, to the uh Seeking a, an opinion of the State Attorney General. Is there any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kott? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 1642 by Alderperson Kittleson authorizing acceptance of 2011 Wisconsin Bureau of Transportation Safety Speed Enforcement Grant. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I, I'm wondering if we could open the floor up to our police chief, uh, Chief Domogalski, for the next three documents, um, as we are going to have to suspend the rules on these, and he can explain uh, so that we don't have any questions and we can go forward with the... Uh, passage of the documents. Okay, then we will take all three all of three. these together, if we may. Uh, 1642, we have 1643 by President Kittleson authorizing acceptance of the 2011 Alcohol Enforcement Grant and 1644 by the same um, tracks uh, for the Tracks Citation Tracking Implementation Grant. Do we have a second on those? Second. second. We have a motion and a second. 
Um, and we uh, we are uh, requesting to suspend, to the, suspend rules. the rules. Do we have a second on that? Second. Is there anybody opposed to suspending the rules? The rules are suspended. Uh, would you like the chief to speak on this? Would, is, are there any questions? Would you like to counsel if he could explain a little bit further or if you're clear on them? Anyone have questions? I, I guess I have some questions. Uh, um, there are three Al Alderman them. Bowers, can you stand please? Yes, I have some questions in regards to this. It uh, doesn't have to be a uh, to long explanation. I'd just like to know. Uh, I, I know it's for speed, alcohol, and uh, the last one I'm not so, so sure Okay. On. We have the floor open to uh, Chief Domigalski, who uh, will be able to explain that for us. Chief? Like you said, the first two are, are overtime grants that um, are to be targeted to speed enforcement and alcohol enforcement. They're both for $35,000, and they fund overtime uh, for those activities. The department or the city has a 25% match for each one, and that's met through the department budget. Um, essentially, what we're doing is putting officers out on overtime and then dedicating officers that are already on the street to do the same type of enforcement as the overtime, so it allows us to maximize our visibility and enforcement. The third one is a track citation implementation grant. Wisconsin Act 2009, 2009 Wisconsin Act 28 requires, um, is a law that was passed, requires law enforcement beginning January 1st of 2011 to um, collect and report data regarding traffic stops to the state. Um, the law directed OJA to pass a rule and how that would be done. In July, they passed a rule saying that the information would be collected by law enforcement agencies and reported to the state through the TRAX system. TRAX is a computer software that's used by the state to collect um, traffic citations and traffic crash data, so um, accident reports, essentially. It allows the officers to do it in their car on their computers, and it creates an efficiency in that they don't have to do multiple um, inputting of the data. They enter it in into their computers once and it gets transferred every place electronically that it needs to go. So it's going to actually create efficiencies um, in the city and with the state. So it, rather than the officers writing the ticket, sending one copy of the ticket to the municipal court and then a clerk in a municipal court inputting into their system, the officers do it in their computer in the car and it gets sent electronically to the municipal court and to the state. And so it's tracked that way. Um, as part of this grant, the state had some um, funds that were made available um, for the city's municipalities for implementation. The way that that went about is the county had to actually submit the grant. So we were partners with the county with the other municipal municipalities in the state. And we were recently notified by the state that because of our work on the, their DDAX program, which stands for um, data-driven approaches to crash and traffic safety. It's a grant that we got earlier in the year for $25,000 that really tailored into the programs that we were implementing. Essentially what we do is, is collect data on crime in the city and collect data on traffic accidents, crashes. We map them and then we lay, overlay them and look for hot spot areas where the, there's the highest concentration of crime and traffic um, accidents or crashes going on and then we put our resources there so it allows us to maximize um, our personnel in the places that they're really needed in the city. So because of our work in, in that grant, in that program, and I've mentioned it at the committee hearing, we've been asked because of what we've done and the success we've had with that program to go to Chicago to do a presentation to a five state region on, on the program to try to roll it out wider. The state contacted us and said that rather than you get the money with the county, we've put some, some other money aside for you. And that the amount of that grant is $71,000 and it's gonna allow us to purchase 40, about $40,000 more of equipment for the squad so that we can do this program. And it's gonna allow us to put uh, computers in 10 extra cars and then it purchases the, the, compu um, the printers so they can print the tickets and some of the other things. There's also a 25% match on that, and that match is meant uh, or met through uh, the salaries of our employees who will be installing that equipment and through the salaries 
during the time that the officers are trained on how to do the software. So there's really no extra cost. Does that answer everybody's questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chief. Very thorough. President Kittleson. Thank you. Then uh, I would move that we put all three resolu resolutions upon their passage, please. Second. Motion and a second to put uh, 16, 42, 3, and 4 upon their passage. Any further discussion? Under further discussion, just thank our chief for the fine work, and, and we're <laughs> happy that uh, we've gotten all, all three of these grants. It's, and I agree. It's great. Thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there is no further discussion, roll call, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries, 1645 by Alderperson Montemayor, extending the deadline for the Special Committee on the Regulation of Dangerous Dogs to complete its charge and submit a report to the Common Council, Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, we've been moving along very well. The, um, the dog people who have been there to help us have lots of good ideas. It is moving very well and very nicely. I think we're going to have an effective um, ordinance coming up quite soon, So, we're, but we need a little more time. Okay, I'll thank you all to person Montemiro. Did this have a deadline on it, this committee? I think 30 days. 30 but days? Another month. Council year, the end of the council year. Oh, at the end of the council year? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so that puts us out till late. September. Second December, December. 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 Second oh, it was December? December? Oh, okay. Second we're meeting. asking for December. Oh, we're asking for December. Exactly. Okay. Getting a little longer leash. <laughs> <laughs> a little longer oh. leash. Oh. Good one, Jim. You've, you've been thinking knows. about that one for a while, I can tell. <laughs> That's the best you could do. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second to give the uh, Committee on da Dangerous Dogs a longer leash. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. I might have to skip you just for that. <laughs> <laughs> Raisler. Aye. Samson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Woof. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Longaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. And Rinfleisch. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, 1646. We're also taking, uh, going back, uh, 1622 with this. 1622, reading by the city clerk. This is a report of officer submitting a communication from Alderman Bauk stating that he believes that the alder persons should vote to approve the resolution to hold the budget vote no earlier than November 29th. And then we have with this uh, 1646 by Alder Persons, Boren, Bauk, Hammond, and Versi to conduct the council vote on the 2011 budget no earlier than November 29th, 2010. Um, do we have a motion? Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the uh, report of officer be accepted and placed on file and I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree that um, the seriousness of the budget this year uh, is something that since, uh, since I've been on council since 2003, we really haven't extended uh, the time frame, but I think this budget really calls for some deep thoughts. Uh, some uh, consensus building, and as such, I do intend to hold a committee of the whole meeting on this Wednesday at 7 o'clock in the council chambers for those that can make it. Uh, one item on the agenda will simply be uh, discussion on the budget. So we'll have some time to talk as well, and that's one for this Wednesday. Um, uh, however, I have the one concern I have though is not having anything scheduled before November 29th. Is I think we're going to go through several votes on this uh, uh, agenda item, I think, or on the budget. Uh, I think it's going to take us several days to reach a consensus or some kind of agreement that uh, fits our, our constituents' needs. My concern is having it not no early on the 29th is where we don't have time before November 1st, or excuse me, December 1st, when it has to be in the state. Uh, so I'd hope that we can still keep it you know, within 20 seconds, 23rd, 24th, 25th, however many days we need to meet to get this accomplished. Uh, so I'll be voting no on this item agenda. Uh, I think ultimately we're probably going to have our final vote probably on the 29th, but uh, 
I'd rather have some uh, discussion leading up to that as well uh, and give us that time frame that it's going to it's going to require uh, for us to reach that agreement. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, if I may comment on this myself, having something to do with the budget, um, I, I disagree adamantly in putting this off until the 29th. Um, it is due to the state on the 1st. If there is no consensus reached on the 29th, we cannot call another uh, council meeting until the 1st. Also, there's another issue. If it's not voted on until the 29th, there's such a thing known in budgets as a mayoral line item veto. If it's not voted on until the 29th and it's due on the 1st, uh, if I were to choose as the mayor to, ve to, line item any, to veto any line items in this budget, again, we're out past the 1st. Uh, the budget uh, has been, the budget schedule has been uh, made public for many weeks. I believe that we should meet on the 22nd. Uh, the chances of the council coming to a consensus on the 22nd, at least uh, not going into past midnight on the 20, going into the 23rd, uh, I think will be a challenge. If we do not, if we meet on the 22nd, uh, and we do not succeed in passing a budget. There is also the 24th available, which is a Wednesday. Uh, if we get into the 24th, the 25th is Thanksgiving. 26th is a city holiday. We could meet on Friday the 26th. I don't know how many people would want to. Uh, that, then that already brings us to Monday the 29th. So in, the, uh, uh, um, in order to to put this off until the 29th, I, th I don't think would be a good uh, uh, recommendation. I don't see us reaching success on the 29th if it's only one day. Uh, and, uh, I, and, and it is my uh, prerogative uh, as mayor uh, that I can exercise a line item veto if the budget is not acceptable to me. And obviously putting it off till the 29th does not give me uh, that option. So I would uh, advise the council to keep it on the 22nd. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> uh, since the uh, budget is still in the process, I believe Alderman Hammond is coming, was gonna come up with some ideas to present Wednesday night. That gets presented Wednesday night. Uh, I don't think it gives, uh, really gives the public enough time to digest it by Monday the 22nd. Uh, I remember the original document that we got as a member of the Finance Committee said that the budget could be approved on the 22nd or the 29th. So we're opting for the second option, which is the 29th. And I just think uh, it gives the, com uh, the community a better time to adjust uh, or find out what's actually in the budget. Uh, again, the Committee of the Whole, uh, and I don't know if the Committee of the Whole is gonna be in closed session or not, but possibly if it is under closed session because we are uh, discussing uh, possibly salary and wages or, or possible employee cuts. Uh, then if it's in closed session, that gives the public even less chance to find out what we're proposing by the 22nd. So that's why I'm gonna <coughs> vote to extend uh, the debate till the 29th and uh, uh, that's why I'm gonna vote. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Alderman Hammond. You buzzed in first. That's okay. I'm patient. Um, uh, I put my name on this for a couple of reasons, and the, and the primary reason is uh, on the 22nd, we're gonna, a lot of things are gonna happen fast and furious. You know, a lot of amendments are gonna be made. Uh, if we talk tax levy increase, if we, you know, what, what have you. And I wanna make sure we have enough time, and I would certainly support the 24th. Um, uh, I wanna make sure we have enough time for our friends in the media, also for our constituents to take a look at, at what we're doing and give us our feedback. I understand they had tonight, but they really don't have the full and complete budget as what we would, as what the, what the council amendments and things like that. So um, I think our constituents, the media, um, should have a chance to vet what we're about to do, um, especially again, if we're talking tax levy increase, those types of things. Um, and so, although I can certainly um, adjust on the 29th, I think when we meet on the 22nd, have our conversation, make our amendments, and then we should reconvene at a separate time to make the final vote, so thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond, and I, I do not disagree um, that uh, uh, maybe, there, maybe we will go into another session after the 22nd, but I'm just looking at the 29th as being uh, too late to begin that process. 
Alderman Renflesh, Vice President Renflesh. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, just to clarify on a point, um, my intent is to hold the Committee of the Whole in open session. Uh, we don't have any documents, we don't have any agreements or proposals that I believe need to be negotiated in private session. Uh, it is simply a working session for the uh, uh, council to throw ideas out, uh, discuss them, debate them, um, and, and hopefully begin to reach some consensus. And I don't think that meeting would be even be able to be held in closed session unless I actually had some kind of document that we were negotiating. Is that correct, Steve? Uh, I, th I believe that would be correct. Uh, generally, if you're talking about policy issues, those are open session items. They're not closed session. So, um, you know, in terms of levy increases, uh, layoffs, um, you know, budget transfers, that kind of thing, that would all be done in open session. Uh, so the public would have the opportunity on the, on the 22nd to, uh, um, uh, to attend, uh, to watch the, 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 the deliberations. And uh, for those friends on TV8, uh, if they're able to be here on that, that evening to televise it, that'd be great as well. Uh, we have that discussion over there. Uh, and just to reiterate the schedule, as, as the mayor had pointed out, uh, we also have to have public notice on any meetings that we have. Uh, so I, I mentioned we can meet on 23rd. Technically, we can't unless we actually schedule a meeting. Um, if we do not reach an agreement on the 22nd uh, and we go into midnight 23rd, we still have to post it 24 hours, which means that one meeting that we can have is the 25th is the only meeting we could have. Uh, no, we meet, we oh, meet we on the 22nd, yeah, so we, you could, we could meet on the 24th. We meet on the 24th, and then the next day is Thanksgiving. Right. And after that, the weekend, it's the 29th. So really, by um, even by having it on the 22nd, we're really only adding one possible day before the 29th vote. If we hold on the 29th, we go over midnight, we're, the next day is the first. We're into the 30th, the next day the budget's due in the state. So again, I urge you not to support this right now, not because I don't think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea to have the public have as much information as possible, but we need to give ourselves the time to do what's right for the constituents and negotiate and debate, and we're only going to basically have three days to do so. And eliminating two days of that to make a decision seems ridiculous to me. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Member in flesh. Alderman Hammond, once again. And I don't know, somebody will have to smack me if I'm doing this wrong, but I would uh, make a, a motion that we um, amend this resolution to, instead of reading no earlier than the 29th, no earlier than the 24th. And I would not disagree with that. Do we have a second on that motion? Second. We have a motion and a second to amend the document to read. Uh, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Common Council shall hold its vote on the 2011 budget no earlier than November 24th, 2011. 2010. 2010. <clears throat> oh, this has, oh a this has a typo on it here, obviously. Thanks for catching that. Sue? Yep. Yes. 2010. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> what would that do? <laughs> I have a question. Okay, under discussion on the amendment, on the yeah, amendment on only. Alderman, yeah. um, we have a flesh. second on Vice that amendment. I'm sorry, I missed that. Yes, I okay, second. I have a second already. Thank you. Um, for Steve, um, by taking the vote no earlier than the 24th, that would not preclude us from discussing it either in the committee of the whole or in the council on 22nd. Is that correct? Um, as long as we can still discuss it on the 22nd, that makes sense. sense. That appears to be what the resolution says is council shall hold its vote no earlier than whatever date you decide. Uh, but that doesn't preclude, I guess, the council from meeting to discuss the budget. If someone, for example, were to make a motion to amend the budget, would that still be allowed? And thus allowing the full budget to be voted on the 24th, or would that also be precluded? Well, I would defer to the authors of the resolution as to what the intent is. Very good. Thank you. Alderman Hammond? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, I think the idea behind this one is that the final budget would be voted on, on in this case, the 24th. Um, again, to give our friends in the media and our constituents the opportunity to, to vet this after a it will probably be an extremely long evening next uh, next Monday. So, again, um, my intention as, a, as an author would be that the final vote of this budget would be on that date, with the 22nd being all of the amendments, and then hold it in the final vote on the 
24th. 24th. In this case, yes. That, that would uh, probably make sense. Um, Alderman Boren, did you? Uh, I just wanted a clarification, and I think Alderman Hammond clarified that, that the final vote would be on the 24th then. Very good. Vice President Rindflesh. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'll support that motion then um, to hold it on the 24th as long as we can still have the discussion on the 22nd as necessary. Um, and I thank them for making the motion, you know, for making the motion as well. Um, I think we do need to make sure that we schedule that meeting then. <laughs> um, is it would it have to be a special council meeting then? Uh, yeah, we would schedule that as a special council meeting on the 24th. Okay, so we can so we probably commit well that it's going to be done. Do that, and we might as well still keep that meeting uh, uh, scheduled for, do we have a meeting? on? No, we don't have a meeting right now on the 29th, correct? No. We may want to go schedule ahead and as well. post the 29th oh, also just in case. Just in case point, we don't have we a vote. We can always cancel that, correct, <laughs> if it's posted. Yeah. And we would move all the budget documents. There's probably... 18, 16 of them, you'd want them moved to the 24th then. That's typically all the reports from all the committees, et cetera, et cetera, and the final budget. And that was the actual second question I had is because we referred everything to the meeting on the 22nd. Everything was referred to the 22nd. So we need to meet on the 22nd, so on the 22nd and, and you refer need to, refer to the 24th. To the 24th. And then we would, the, the, bud, or the agenda would have to be drafted the next morning. It as well. And okay. sent out so there's a 24 hour notice. Very good. And then also the motion does include the typo corrections, I'm assuming. Um, I, yeah, that, uh, I just that one, just that <laughs> one year on the end there. <laughs> All right. It's only a year. Yeah, I would. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the friendly amendment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have a motion uh, to amend the document to read uh, uh, that the budget is not voted on any earlier than November 24th, 2010. Attorney McLean? Uh, just so that the document is clear, perhaps you could uh, amend it to say it shall hold its final That's vote on the budget. Do that, yeah. Hold its uh, final vote on the budget. There we go. So then, the amendment. Very well. Yep. Alderman Hammond? That's what I was Good with I'll that. second the amended. Right. Okay. So the amended is that the Common Council shall hold its final vote on the 2011 budget no earlier than November 24th, 2010. Everybody clear on that? Is there any further discussion? But we will still meet on November 22nd. Yes, we will. That's where most of the work will hopefully be done. Absolutely. 17. Okay. Roll call, please. You want a roll call on the amendment? Um, no, we don't need a roll call on the amendment, just on the final. Okay. On the amendment, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We have one opposition, Alderman Heidemann on the amendment. On the uh, final doc final amended document, roll call, please. Uh, Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Mercy? No. Wonkman? Aye. Boren? No. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Nope. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Raisler? Aye. 11 ayes, 4 noes. Motion carries as amended. Moving on. 1647 and 1648 lies over. 1649 through 1655 to be referred. However, we are pulling uh, 1650. A little premature on that uh, for the uh, these industrial development revenue bonds. I thought those were supposed to be referred to finance. No, nope, the bank. The, excuse me, Alderman um, Hammond. The bank called Friday, and I emailed the finance department or the finance committee saying that they no longer want to do this. Okay, fair enough. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Uh, thank you. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to file 1655. Second. We have a motion and a second to file 1655. 1655 by Alderpersons Versi, Bourne, Heidemann, Bauk, Bowers, and Sampson, authorizing the City of Sheboygan <coughs> Fire Department to only conduct, quote, emergency long distance transfers, unquote, as a last resort. Um, to be referred to Finance, PPNS, and the Committee of the Whole. Under discussion. On filing the document, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Uh, I guess uh, in reading over this, I did some research today and I did not find any uh, other municipality that has a similar uh, type of an ordinance or resolution, uh, which also conflicts kind of with uh, our theory that we uh, were looking at trying to have the fire department more as the Manitowoc or La Crosse um, type of format. And I, in looking at those, none of those have any restrictions on any transports or any long distance. Um, I guess I'm kind of confused with the definition of an emergency and, and who's going to be the person that's defining the emergency. I spent several hours over the weekend uh, at the emergency room and I think that everyone was there was an emergency in their own mind. So I guess if we're going to leave it up to the board to uh, judge um, the fire chief for what was an emergency transport and what, what wasn't would not be fair to uh, him or his designee. I guess I have some questions regarding the continuum of care that's interrupted. Um, you have the option or the uh, possibility of uh, the fire department ambulance picking someone up that needs to be transported, uh, either a cardiac or a children that needs to be transported out of the city um, that they, by this ordinance, would not be allowed to do uh, unless it was deemed an emergency. Uh, or if it was the choice of the patient or the family that they wanted to go to uh, the VA hospital or children's hospital in Milwaukee, um, most ambulances allow the option, uh, if it's not an emergency, where the patient would like to go and their hands would be tied. Uh, you're looking at doubling the bills. You're looking at getting a bill from a private corporation and also um, the fire department, which we all know our medic, uh, medical bills are confusing enough when they come. And I think that uh, giving the uh, fire department and supporting them with the ability um, of what uh, was voted on by the uh, taxpayers recently, um, I think it's a good decision to uh, move on and support uh, our fire department and the services and, and hopefully avoid uh, any other uh, items like this. I also look at the last paragraph, which um, holds the uh, fire chief or his uh, designee responsible, and I, I, I've really never seen any of those. I'll kind of defer to Attorney McLean to see if he's ever seen anything like that in an ordinance before, and I, I think that it's somewhat of a personal attack on uh, either the fire department or the chief. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. <clears throat> Alderman Bourne. Thank you, uh, Mayor. <clears throat> the reason why I co-signed on to this uh, resolution is number one, the financial situation that the city is in. Uh, I remember back to the days before uh, Chief Herman was the chief and that letter that he wrote to the union saying that one of the goals of his fire department was to put Orange Cross out of business so that they could expand uh, out into the county and the surrounding area and therefore be able to hire a lot more personnel. We're, we're having a hard time even justifying keeping on the personnel that he has right now with the budget situation we're in and uh, if we're going to be allowing him to expand out into the county eventually, it's unsustainable. We cannot afford to hire more people on the fire department to allow them to go out into the county and take over areas that are now taken care of by a private ambulance service. Uh, it's not sustainable. Uh, I, I'm all for the ambulance service now that the referendum is passed to being in business in the city of Sheboygan. There are protocols in place at the hospital to determine when there is an emergency and when there isn't an emergency. And, uh, and, and the, the, the fire department will still be able to make inter-facility transfers in the city. But I don't want the, uh, uh, the ambulances running all over southeastern Wisconsin and taking ambulances out of this city for local calls uh, when, they, when we have, are supposed to have three dedicated ambulances. We got two ambulances out of the city then we've got only two ambulances left dedicated to the city. So uh, as far as public safety is concerned, I think public safety is well served if our ambulance service conducts their business in the city and if they have to make a uh, transfer out of the city, that is going to be determined by the protocols in place by the medical staffs at the hospital. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, one of the reasons why this came to is to stop a snowball before it starts. Um, as Alderman Bourne pointed out, we want, obviously, the citizens voted on the ambulance service, we want to keep them in our city. We want them running our city. We have them dedicated three ambulances to the city. As soon as they start taking ambulances out of the city, are they doing one of two things? They're leaving the city without three or two or one ambulances, or they're calling in extra overtime. So it's far further expense that we're going to need. Also, long term, uh, we always talk about having a vision on this council. Um, you need to have a vision looking at this because the long-term vision of this means more personnel, 
more ambulances, more gas, more fuel costs, more maintenance costs. So you're trying to stop a snowball before it starts. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, please, the group, um, I would like to maybe open the floor to the chief. Um, if anybody would have an objection to that, I have a few questions right I would ahead. like to ask him. Chief? Chiefs of Department Head, we don't need a motion to open the floor. Oh. Rookie mistake. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Sorry, Chief. How you doing? All right. <laughs> um, actually, I have a, just a couple quick questions. Um, if, with the transports of the ambulance outside of the city, do you foresee an increase of personnel or overtime in order to do that? I don't see any increase in personnel. Okay. Uh, in the foreseeable short or long-term future. Um, the only increase in overtime um, would be if everything's tied up and we need to call back, and that's very minor. Okay. Um, so you know, the article that you wrote gets thrown all along. I just want to give you an opportunity to explain in your article what you were talking about in that article, because it gets thrown out a lot. I want to give you an opportunity to, to have that conversation uh, or to explain that real briefly, if you could. Um, kind of noticed you're shaking your head back there, so I wanted to give you an opportunity to explain yourself and your motives or what you were trying to get at in that article. And I think I, uh, I addressed this subject a couple of weeks ago uh, in this chamber. Um, that article was written in 2006 or seven. Probably should have been written in 2002. Um, as you look long term and how we were looking at a viable fire department, um, I don't believe I've ever said that I was trying to put Orange Cross out of business or any private ambulance company. Said many a times, we depend on them, they be depend on us. Uh, it's a better system with both of us around. Um, I have a lot of questions on this resolution. Um, it's very unclear to me. Uh, just out of curiosity, we have four ambulances, right? Correct. One's mothballed, three are operating? Uh, three are frontline. I, I guess I wouldn't call that fourth oh, I one. I shouldn't say mothballed. Mothballed. Um, when, we, when we have eight paramedics on duty, uh, they're available to staff that fourth one immediately. All right. I guess my, my point in this, in this line of question is, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we hire department heads for a reason, and that's to run the respective departments um, and to micromanage them by telling them, you know, that they, they can't do this or they can't do that. Um, it just seems kind of crazy to me. Um, I think we should be giving the chief, we asked him to put together a plan, um, then the ambulance referendum came about, which made it more difficult. Um, understandably, I think we need to give uh, the chief and the mayor the opportunity to come to us with a plan and then vet it from there instead of tying their hands and then saying, how come you're not doing this? Why aren't you doing this? How come, it just seems crazy. So um, I'm gonna support the file. It, um, I, I just think we need to not micromanage the department heads. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Uh, next, we have Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Chief. Does anybody have any other questions for the I Chief? Might, I might. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sorry. Mayor. I, I guess I look at this uh, resolution and I don't see anything in there about, and I'm sure you reviewed it, somewhat about working outside of the city. I think it has to do with emergency long distance transfers. It, it doesn't say anything about going out and working and trying to take any business away from uh, Orange Cross. I guess the question that I kind of have is in the event that uh, something does happen in the city and, and the ambulances are out of service or busy or, or there's a major call, Orange Cross would back the fire department up, correct? That, that's a system that's in place now, yes. And, and it kind of works vice versa. If they needed you, they would call them. And, and this kind of also um, leaves you kind of in a bind if you happen to be called by um, Orange Cross to a county call, would we say, and you need to transport to some place other than Sheboygan. Let's say you're you know, going to Manitowoc, you're going to St. Mary's Ozaki, you're going to Children's, you're, you're, you're kind of limited here by telling them that you can't, and they're not available to do it, so then it, it, it kind of kicks back in again, and I, I guess for me, it looks like it punishes the patient, you know, the double billing, the, the fact that it's not clear, the, the rapport that they, they gain with the people from the ambulance, and whether, I think you can elaborate, some of the cardiac people and the children need to go directly to Milwaukee, they don't go to the hospital in Sheboygan first? There are a number of times when the, uh, the medical facility here in town will direct us directly um, to a facility outside the city. Um, so that I question on this resolution, how do we do that? 
and uh, is again, there I guess a delay we, in that time? Right. We go into the fact of what the emergency is. If you're not going to run red lights and siren down to Milwaukee, is it an emergency? Thank you. And I think there's some other implications as far as mutual aid and Mavis were on uh, other people's cards. That brings in a whole question again of responding outside the city. Currently, whenever we leave the city, I contact the mayor. Um, that's part of my job. Anytime we leave, I have to contact him. Um, thank you, Chief, and thank you, Alderman Raisler. Uh, the thing I find most disturbing about this uh, resolution is the final line that it says that if the city of Sheboygan Fire Department ambulances leave the city limits for any non-emergent transfer or emergent transfer without authorization, the department head will be reprimanded and possible charges will be filed with Fire and Police Commission. Um, to me, that is an adversarial position, to say the least. I don't think we have any other department heads that operate under a premise like that. Um, I think it's confrontational. And truthfully, um, I was hoping that with the referendum that took place in the city regarding the ambulance, uh, that the citizens voted to keep the city uh, fire department-based ambulance, that this issue would be over. So um, I would recommend filing this myself. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Your Honor. This is still allowing them to do current services and keep doing their jobs the way they are. And basically, just like the dog ordinance, if you don't have any laws in place, anything in writing to stop things from happening to begin with, without having something, you're giving them an open checkbook. And the citizens voted to have that by a slim margin, but they didn't vote to have an open checkbook sent out to have future earnings, have future hirings. You're going to need more personnel. It's plain and simple when you're running an ambulance business that you're doing, that that's the way you're going to have to do it to continually contain <clears throat> and have your three ambulances to the city, because that's what the citizens wanted. They didn't want their tax dollars running down the highway. They wanted their tax dollars paying for it to stay here to support them when they needed it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan, and uh, I, don't, I don't like to continue harp, harping on the business end of this, but I think we have to take a look at the fact that uh, if you look at this other than a marginal cost basis with having two paramedics chased down to Milwaukee and be out of service in the city here for a number of hours, the wages and benefits of, those, of that personnel, gasoline, wear and tear on the ambulance, uh, we're not we're, we're gonna lose money on every one of those calls unless you stick with this marginal cost basis that we've been arguing for years but let's get real uh, we're gonna lose money on every one of these calls except if except if it would possibly be a private pay but if we're being reimbursed by Medicare or Medicaid I, I would I would challenge the chief to show me how other than marginal cost that we're gonna make any money on any of these calls at, at best I think it's gonna be break-even Thank you, Alderman Bourne. I believe the chief's going to take you up on that offer. If I could address that, um, three years ago when we got into this business, and um, almost every day since then, we do comparisons with other cities. Um, as you're all well aware, we've looked at Manitowoc, we've looked at a lot of other cities. The difference between the financial success that those cities are having and ours is the interfacility transports. It's pretty plain and simple. It's a higher collection rate. It's a higher charge because of the mileage, and it just makes sense to utilize your people more efficiently, more effectively. They're there anyway. You might as well collect the dollars that you can. Chief, you may want to stay up there. Alderman Versi. Just a quick question for you, Chief. With doing all those elements of transfers, you have four rigs, three transfers go out. City of Sheboygan is left with one ambulance. Correct? What do you do in that, in that scenario? I would be... Uh, calling Manitowoc to come back us up, same as they do up in their area. Okay. Um, Orange Cross is around to back us up. And as we uh, described when we put the business plan forth in 2007, that as we go down the line and our employees retire and we replace <coughs> them with trained paramedics that we did not pay the training for, we will be able to do that to back staff. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you. Are we observing the speaking twice rule? Uh, I haven't enforced that uh, basically since I have been mayor. So yeah, I can't pick and choose. Unless it gets to be midnight, then I might start. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. <clears throat> Alderman Hammond. Thank you. 
I'll try not to violate the rule. Sorry, Marilyn. <laughs> but it, you know, again, I I go back to the premise of micromanaging department heads. Um, first off, you can't expand the fire department. The hirings have to be approved by the council. Um, you know, as the chief's own admission, and anybody that spent uh, more than a day in any type of uh, public protection, you always have a backup. We call it in the military a buddy system. They call it mutual aid. Um, thirdly, um, yeah, it's not an open checkbook. I mean, again, the budgets are approved by the, by the council. Uh, if they want to spend more money, it's approved by the council. It's not an open checkbook. And then fourthly, you know, I can't speak for the chief, but I can speak as an officer in the military. I would never give up three quarters of my resources to a different battlefield um, when I know there could be a battle on my own turf. So I would be hard pressed to believe that the chief would send three boxes down to Milwaukee with one box to, to protect the city. So I mean, again, we shouldn't be telling the chief of fire or the chief of police or any department head um, how to run their departments. They should be submitting plans to us and we can vet them out then. We shouldn't be preemptively um, trying to take that power out of their hands. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Um, you know, the way, the way I see it, it's not uh, any different from operating a candy store now that we're in the ambulance business. Uh, we're in the ambulance business to stay that was decided by the voters. If I have a candy store and my goal is to sell $300 worth of candy, um, if I reach $300 worth of candy by 11 a.m., I'm not gonna shut the doors and say, okay, I'm done with my day of work, I'm gonna keep working. The ambulance is no different. You know, we are by the vote of the citizens through the referendum, we are in the ambulance business. I cannot see tying the chief's hands and trying to second guess how he is going to run our ambulance business. It's not our job, as Alderman Hammond said, to micromanage how he runs his department. I was hoping that with the referendum that it would put this issue to rest. Um, this is not heading in the right direction in my opinion, but of course the vote is yours. Any further discussion? <coughs> we have a motion and a second to file. Uh, to file. A yes vote would be to file. A no vote will refer it to finance, PPNS, and the Committee of the Whole. Roll call, please. Samson. No. Vanderweel. Yes. Versi. No. Longman. No. Boren. No. Bowers. No. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Nope. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Nine eyes, six no's. Motion carries, document is filed. Report of Committee 7, 1656 by the Committee of the Whole recommending filing document agreeing to match savings from union concessions and a levy increase to be used to retain city personnel for 2011. Vice President Rindfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be uh, accepted and filed. Second. We have a motion to uh, accept and adopt and that the document I'm be sorry. filed. I got that one wrong. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> First time a parliamentarian got something wrong in this council. Um, we have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. And Samson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of Committees 8, 1657 by Finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget, establishing estimated revenue and appropriations for the Comprehensive Planning Grant. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to that we ex uh, move to accept and adopt the report of committee and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Versi. 
Aye. Wankerman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. And Vanderweil. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1658 by finance, recommending consideration of an initial resolution regarding industrial development revenue bond financing to benefit Torganol Incorporated. Information with respect to the job impact of the project will be available at the time of consideration of the initial resolution. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, I move the uh, reporter committee be accepted in depth and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the uh, resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Just uh, kind of in the interest of clarification, this is a company out of Sheboygan Falls that's looking to move into the city of Sheboygan, um, bringing the jobs with it, um, and also possibly looking at, um, at last count, upwards of five additional positions. So they're looking to grow and expand, um, and they want to do it right here in good old Sheboygan. So interest of discussion. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Versi? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1659 by finance recommending consideration of <coughs> final resolution regarding Midwest Disaster Area Revenue Bond Financing to benefit Just Kids Dental SC project. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Uh, move to accept and adopt the report of committee and uh, the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Hammond, if you'd like to. Uh, just a brief explanation again. Um, a local dental firm looking to expand um, over uh, towards the right next to Associated Bank. They want to build a very nice state-of-the-art facility and employ a few more people um, so they can uh, um, accommodate their growing practice. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Warren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Abstain. And Wangaman. Aye. 14 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 1660 lies over to December 6th, 1661 through 1664 to be referred. Other matters authorized by law, Attorney McLean. 1665 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011 and June 30, 2012. That will go to law and licensing. And I believe that's all. Move to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. In a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Thank you, everybody. You should have stuck with your original. Keep him in your desk. Oh, well.